Testing one, yeah. I think I threw you around the the bridge. <laughs> well, I got it. <laughs> a few remarks. I was very well received by the students. There was one, two that walked out, and others didn't like it, and they huh. threw their programs at them, and they just they, they had not had There he is. Mr. President, are you planning any actions against the South African government to put pressure on them? I'm going to take any questions. We only have a brief, brief time for our meeting. Well, can you tell us, will you veto the uh, sanctions bill before the House?
is the peace agreement went with him. Yes. The alliance was consulted and the Afghan people support whatever agreement might be. Thanks, sir. Nice to see you. Yes, good to see, see you. you. You know Ambassador yes. Marjorie? Yes. Hello, Hello there. Excuse, Excuse me. me. Yes. Nice to see you. Yes. And you yes. Senator Mayo. Sir, sir. 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 There is a moment that is for me very much. Yes. 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 even at the college level. And when I found that some of our juniors at a great university in California, next to their last year of school, uh, we were confused as to which side we were on in the war. Oh. And uh, they couldn't place names, places, anything. And I don't know what kind of history we're teaching them anymore, but this will contribute to it. Because I don't know if there haven't been many wars in history in which the issues of right and wrong were as clearly defined as they were in this, in this one, in that great event there. I, uh, I, was a, I was in the Army, reserve officer called to active duty, and uh, so many of them to say about it, they wound up flying a desk to the Air Force for never get out of California. <laughs> but, uh, we had a close connection with a great many people this time because where I was serving as an adjutant and executive officer with the post that General Arm created as a part of his program, which was successful to get the Air Force out of the Army into a separate practice. So we were the first beginning of what would correspond to the Civil War. We were in charge of training all the combat camera crews for the Air Force and sending them overseas. And and then we received back in turn their film, which we edited, much of it top secret, 
So it was a, a very close view, even though in much more comfort than the people that were there at hand. Half of that. I, I just, I think this is so wonderful, what you're going to do. There haven't been many battles in world's history that were any more important than that. All of those crosses and stars of David, row on, row on. What was it the poets said they would never get old? You know, they'll always be young. But they truly uh, did not die in vain. People could live a lot longer than they have and contribute less than they did to freedom and all the things we hold dear. So I wish you all success this day. Right. I knew <laughs> <laughs> two boys from my own town who were twins, identical twins. Both of them wound up in the Navy, and one of them was on a ship on D-Day, offshore, and they were bringing out the barges with the wounded from the beach, and put him, taking them up on his ship. He happened to be on the bridge looking through glasses at the shore. And he was looking at a German with the rangefinder there at an artillery battery. And he saw the signal and the gunfire and the shell landed short of their ship. And he continued to watch, saw it again, and the second shell landed long. <laughs> she knew who was the third one. <laughs> they were rangefinding on this. And he said, told me after we had the greatest temptation to just call out to the men down below and say, never mind. You know, what you're doing is it's all over. Yeah. And while he was watching, suddenly that whole crew box and battery ah, <laughs> blew up <laughs> one of our cruisers behind them that made a direct hit. Ah, it's <laughs> His brother, incidentally, was on what was called a splinter, splinter fleet off Florida. Oh, my uh, No, he wasn't yet. He was, he sent just a brief message in which he said, sighted sub, sad the same. <laughs> <laughs> I, this, young, this young brother, on his fan tail yacht that had been commandeered, they rolled an ash can off the rear end depth charge and what they thought was the sounding of a submarine. <laughs> and the boat was so slow, they blew the rear end of the <laughs> And this other thing had happened, and my hometown, the lake, got out of radio. He was the one that they didn't know whether the court marshal or not. And said a radio SOS that said, sight itself, sight itself. <laughs> <laughs> I have the great pleasure of sitting today, June 6th a while back at, at Normandy, and I made my first speech in French. Trey my very bad. <laughs> but uh, I can assure you the people of Normandy hadn't forgotten that we came there. It was a, it was a nice. very moving ceremony. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting us come. So, I'm going to get it all with you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mr. President. So, I see you got our whole order of battle.